Hello, Facebook. Okay, we're going to talk about trollers. That's what we're talking about today. This is so on top of mind for me today because I got trolled last night, guys. I did. And we're going to go over some points of mine. I have some recommendations on how you can deal with or interact or even just basically turn into a positive from basically turning into an opportunity or as well as just an empowering moment if you get a troller. All right. But first, before I go cover those points, just real quick, I want to introduce myself. I am Kristen LaDuke, owner of Porchnook, a decorative paint business located in Folsom, California. That's right. I make paint for furniture as well as I paint furniture. I like to use my colors and showcase my colors and share it with you guys on Facebook. So thanks for joining me. Just to let me know if my Wi-Fi is working okay, can you please hit me some emoji buttons? My personal favorite is the wow emoji button. Let me know if things are looking good on your end. Okay, I've dropped already a couple of times, so your help is greatly appreciated. All right, I've got my notes here. I'm very passionate when it comes to when people try to bully others, so I tend to get a little bit excitable, and so I have to have my notes with me to make sure I cover everything I really want to share with you, because I think this is really important. The reason why it's important is because I cannot tell you how many people I have met who want to start their own business or start um, a social media presence and share their gifts, but they're so scared of the trollers that 1% or even half of a percent of the population of people who are just nasty and just want to tear them down. And I think it's, uh, we shouldn't give that type of negativity power. Give me a thumbs up if you agree. So my, my this is for my friends, for my creative friends, for the folks like you who want to actually start a creative business for themselves and maybe fearful of starting your own social media platform and extending your presence and extend and giving you that yourselves the tools to share your gifts. We need those gifts. And I think it's important that we understand how we can take trolling people who just want to prod you on making them miserable, how we can turn into an opportunity as well as an empowering moment. Okay, I kid you not. So I see you guys popping up. Thank you so much for joining me. Please hit me some emojis so I know that I'm up and running okay. That'd be so great. All right, here are my tips. And after I share my tips, I'm going to share with you the dialogue with the troller that I had last night and you guys are gonna be able to tell me if i did an okay job thanks for the thumbs up i'm live fabulous thank you you guys are gonna be able to tell me after i'm done with my points if i interacted with this person in a reasonable professional manner okay all right here are my notes here i go trollers you are definitely going to need to approach this as an opportunity okay First, we need to understand the difference between a troller and someone who's just upset by maybe something that they bought from you, right? A product, a service. Listening to what's being said about your brand or your business, business. If, a, if an online troll is really just a customer complaining or just has an issue or a concern about their interaction with you or your business, you need to know the difference and listen. Sometimes it's really hard to see those negative comments out there for the universe to see, right? Yes, it's hard to see it, it's hard to feel it but you need to listen and we need to learn from it. And sometimes people just need to be heard, right? So when you hear them, you help them, you acknowledge them. Usually the conversation will end with a big thank you, a big public thank you. I kid you not. That's probably 99% of my interactions with people who may have a concern or a question. Okay. Now, if the criticism, this is how I define what a troll is, a troll comment. If the criticism is not based on their personal experience or interaction with you, if it's got nothing to do with them actually personally experiencing your product or brand, or even your work for that matter, then congratulations, you've got a troller. And you're like, congratulations, are you nuts? I kid you not. Congratulations if you've got a troller. When someone, and here's what I truly believe, is that when someone tries to kick you down, they are simply telling you, loud and clear that you have something that they want. You guys, honestly, I'm not kidding you. I'm not just trying to pump up your ego. You have something that they want or they're worried about something that you have, okay? You are willing to put yourself out there. You're willing to create a brand or a product that you stand behind. You've got more guts than probably they did and they wish that they had. I kid you not, okay? Believe in yourself. Now, when I find a trolling comment on my website or my social platforms, okay, I throw my arms up in the air and I do, I yell, yes, I have a troller. I, I don't do emotional eating when I, do, when I find a troller, guys. I don't do emotional eating. I do celebratory eating. I 
celebrate with a cupcake. <laughs> I do a lot of cupcakes. I have a, I eat a lot of cupcakes. I'm always celebrating. Um, I throw my arms up in the air. I say yes, because it's one of three things. You know, it means that I'm doing something right because again, I'm doing something that they wish they were doing or that I have something that they have. They have handed me a, a learning opportunity. It is true. You can just totally ignore or block them. Absolutely. But also there are times when you can actually learn from the troller's comment. Okay. And number three, I can now also be given an opportunity to rise above it and actually turn it into an opportunity for my business. It's true. It's either empowering or you're giving your, your business an opportunity when you have a troller. It's true. All right. Here's some tips. Got to if you decide that you do want to start a business, get an online um, social media presence for yourself. I think you should do it. It's wonderful. And the community that you develop yourself, it is so rewarding. Just do it. Because again, we're only talking about a half percent of the population who may be wanting to treat you poorly. Right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the first tip, if you're going to start a website, blog, or social platform, okay? The first step is to establish policy for comments. It's very, it's, it's a great guideline, not only for them or for your followers, but also for yourself. Um, these policies should be clearly detailed um, of what kind of comments are actually allowed. And you should also outline on your web, this, this information should be outlined on your website or your social media platforms. If you don't know what this language or policy should be, feel free to message me. I'm actually working on something for myself and for my website, and I'd be happy to share my copy with you. Just message me, all right? It's really easy. It's like three bullet points. And what's neat too is that I actually have no issue with telling people like, you know, you're not acting very nice. But sometimes people don't feel comfortable saying, I don't think you're acting very nice. Sometimes people need something to point to saying, hey, you know what? The policies are saying that you're not following the rules and you're not being very nice. So that's why it's helpful to have the, the policy copy. Does that make sense? Give me a thumb, thumbs up if that makes sense. All right. Now, the first step when you get a troller, you can ignore them. You can even block them if you want. You guys, this is the empowerment of the social universe. I kid you not. Time is money. Can I get an amen? It's really easy to allow someone else's bad behavior to fill up your bandwidth. Do you know what I mean by bandwidth? It's the energy that we have um, that helps us function, that allows us to function in daily life. When our bandwidth is really filled up with negative things, thanks for the thumbs up. Our ability to interact with others, whether they're strangers or even our loved ones, like let's say you had a really bad day of work, right? And your brain is just full of it, full of the negative negativity. And you keep replaying your day over and over again. And then you get home and you're, you don't sound as kind as you'd like to be. You're not as patient as you'd like to be. When that happens, that's bandwidth that's eaten up, right? You need the bandwidth in order to function with your loved ones and your daily life. So this bad behavior can easily fill up your bandwidth. Bandwidth is money, guys. Time is money. So again, you can just ignore them or block them. You, the social universe, you have the power to cultivate a community that is healthy for you. You have the ability to cultivate a community that is good for your followers. Okay. You have every right to do this. Every right. Trolls want attention. Can I get an amen? It's true. They want to get you angry. They want to get you frustrated. They want to make you uncomfortable. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up. I'm glad that you're, you're liking this. I'm glad. Let me know if you guys have any ideas or questions. Let me know. All right. No matter how difficult it might be, simply ignoring the troll could be your best tactic because when they don't get a response, they're most likely just going to go away. I found a statistic from the Pew Research Center, P-E-W, Pew Research Center. They say that 60% of respondents opt to ignore online harassment and it works for them, 60%. So you would not be alone if you were to block or just ignore. You're in very fine company. You gotta watch out for yourself. You gotta watch out for your followers. Time is money. Bandwidth is money, okay? All right, now for the other 40% who feel that they should address the troller's comments, all right, 40%. This, I fell on that 40% last night because I did respond to the you, to the comment, the troll comment that I got on my YouTube channel for Porchnook. Here are my tactics. You need to humanize the situation. That diffuses it immediately. <clears throat> it does for the majority. You humanize the situation or in a sense, you also unmask them. 
However, this requires, listen carefully, this requires professionalism as well as responsibility. All right. Trolls thrive on anonymity. All right. And by taking away that power, you may make that troll think twice about leaving nasty comments on your website or blog or social media account. Okay. However, to be responsible, you need to be responsible. Do not uncover or reveal sensitive information about this person. Okay. Can we, can we get like, can I swear you guys in? Do you swear to be professional and to be responsible? What is this? Boy Scouts? Is it Boy Scouts? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was never a Girl Scout or, or a Brownie guys. I don't know these things, but I did have a brother. I do have a brother. He was a Boy Scout. Okay. Here is my guideline for when I respond to a troll's comment. Get a pen and paper, guys. Note takers are history makers. All right. This is what I do. And again, when I'm done with this list, I'm going to read to you my response to the gal who kind of left a not so nice note on my YouTube channel. Here are the points. I think there's six or seven of them. All right. You ready? You are going to kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. <laughs> You're going to kill them with kindness, professionalism, as well as your smarts. Because you got it, guys. You guys, you've got the goods. Just remember, you've been trolled. You got something that someone else wants. So you have the leverage. You're going to kill them with kindness, professionalism, and your smarts. Here's, here, here, here's your step-by-step. First, you're going to acknowledge who they are, meaning taking away their anonymity. You got a name, right? Or maybe you know that they may be, they're very, it's very easy to find people online. It's really surprises me how people think that you can't be found. It's, it's pretty silly, actually. The gal last night actually used her name. <laughs> oh. So you first you acknowledge who, who they are. You also acknowledge, number two, their point of view and why they may have made it. That takes a big gulp of the old ego, right? A big gulp, big hard gulp. You acknowledge it. You also are going to thank them for sharing their opinion. You're going to do it, guys. Number four. Then, here's the trick. You aligned your passion that you have for your business and you're going to align it with their passion in the comment that they shared with you. So for example, you're going to start the sentence with like you, I dot, 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 dot. Does that make sense? You're going to align your passion that's behind your business or your work or your brand. And you're going to align your passion with theirs. They have a very strong opinion about something and you're going to align your own very strong opinion with them. You're going to neutralize the, the playing field. Number five, you're going to share a benefit about your business or your community, for example, anything that you know that makes you awesome. You're going to say, yep, like you, I'm very passionate about my paint line and my products that I have to offer. And I couldn't have done it without my community's help. And not only that, with their help, I've been able to support a 100% guarantee of my paint line. Booyah. Does that make sense? <laughs> And my final point is to, and here's the closer, you need to praise what they do for a living or encourage them to continue with their great work. You are going to, again, praise them for what they do for a living because that information may be very available with one Google search, as well as you're going to encourage them to keep up the great work. What do you think? This is my personal guideline. This is what I do when I have trollers. You know, people say you have to have a thick, thick skin to deal with trollers. I disagree. I think you just need to be able to switch it in your mind. First of all, you're empowered as to whether or not that person can continue being with you in your community. Or, and or you have the ability, you can switch it so you can see an opportunity to help leverage your own business and brand. Does that make sense? You may even end up making an online friend. You never know. Okay, you guys, here is the dialogue that I shared with the gal online. <clears throat> I'm not going to share her name. I'm not going to share a particular brand of paint that she is mentioning in her comment because that's not what I do. Here's what she said. She says, hi, just so you know, the brand that you mentioned about paint, well, it is the original 
and anything else you use is either latex or acrylic. This brand is the best, meaning not mine. Mine's not the best. <laughs> that stung. It did. It stung a little bit. And yes, mine is latex and water-based. It's true. It is true. Here is my reply. You guys need to tell me if I did okay. I said, hi, name. Based on your comment, I guessed you are a retail holder of this particular paint line. I'm paraphrasing, excuse me. And I was right. I took away her anonymity. I see that you have a, a really cute boutique in South Carolina. Fabulous. Welcome to my channel, Killer with Kindness. It is amazing how passionate we become when we when it comes to materials and the tools we use for furniture painting. Don't you agree? So again, I'm aligning her passion with my passion. Does that make sense? Being that you are a brand um, retailer helps me understand your opinion of my paint. Again, I'm humanizing. Like you, I'm passionate about my product and back it up with a full guarantee. I couldn't have done it without the support of my amazing community. I have seen your work online and you do, an, you do an amazing job. Keep up the great work, exclamation mark. That was my response. I would like to hear from you guys if you think that this was appropriate of me. If you think I did an okay job, I would love to hear from you guys. Cause again, you guys are what make me, you guys keep me honest. All right. Okay guys, I'm gonna sign off. I got things to do. I got things to paint. I've got a custom order that just rolled in and I'm helping a gal out who's actually moving here to the Folsom, uh, California area and I can't wait to dig into it. Uh, please again, um, hey Julie. Hey Julie, so good to see you. Hello, I'm new now. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Rockin' Furniture. Oh, you guys, Rockin' Furniture Revivals. My favorite furniture painting artist in Nevada is Rock and Furniture Revivals. You guys have to check them out. Check on the name and you'll get her Facebook page. She's amazing. Hey, Christina, I nailed it. And it, you need this today, Christina. Yes, it's so important. I'm so glad that you popped up. Christina Woodcock, you guys, is one of my most engaging and supportive people. Like, she's part of that 99%. That is so supportive and amazing and positive. If anyone can align themselves with Christina is, is so lucky. So lucky. Julie, nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, I am in California. So Porch Nook is located in Folsom, California. What's the first thing that you think of when you hear Folsom, California? I'll tell you what. It was, let me give you a tip. It's a concert that was held in a prison. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Christina. Oh, you're so welcome. Yes, we do need to support each other. Hugs. Absolutely. And what was just what was um, unfortunate is that this person, you know, is is a boutique furniture painting boutique in South Carolina. And it, she kind of went against the the um, very inclusive information sharing, idea sharing, community of uh, furniture painting. And so I actually hope that she reaches out to me again, because I would love to actually talk to her one on one about it a little bit further, because I think there's definitely opportunity. There's always opportunity to expand your network and to learn from people. Absolutely. OK, guys, I'm going to sign off. Christina, thanks so much for reaching out. I always love seeing your face. Hey. Kayla, okay, you missed the beginning. That's okay. I'm going to actually hit the finish button and I'm going to save this live on my Porch Nook page. So you're going to be able to access it as soon as I hit finish. You're so, Kayla, you're the best. Thank you. Susan, oh, Susan. Totally, a pro Susan, okay. Susan Rowe, you guys, in Wisconsin. She Okay, and she likes how my appropriate my appropriate response. Susan is the like the best copywriter in the face of the planet. If you guys ever need copywriting work, I know you're busy, Susan. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna just brag about you. She is the most amazing, most supportive professional when it comes to copywriting, as well as uh, creative collaboration. She's so great. Julie, you're in Quartzville, California. 
which is in Southern California. Okay, yeah, I'm up north. Susan, P.S. Hugs. I'm gonna throw you a kiss noise. Kiss noise at you, Susan. Miss you so much. You're welcome, Kayla. Okay, guys, I'm gonna sign off. You feel free to message me anytime, you guys. Do you think I should maybe even type this up as a blog post? Susan, you know, <laughs> sometimes I misspell my stuff and even when I get my punctuations wrong, you know this, Susan, <laughs> my it's. I'll never forget when you told me and when I wrote my it's wrong. <laughs> but maybe I should type up these thoughts in a blog post. Oh, what do you think? Because, you know, us creative folks, we're a sensitive bunch. Because what we do, right, it's an, it's an expression of ourselves. And we put it into our business. And then to have some random person just like, you know, try to damage your reputation. We basically, it's a part of us that's in our work. And when someone criticizes that, that's really hurtful. It really hurts. Julie, you like the idea of me doing a blog post. Okay, I will. I will type up these notes right away. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I am. You guys have a great day. It's sunny here. <laughs> Go figure. It's sunny here in California, Folsom, California. We're, we're actually dealing with a lot of rain. I think I'm going to go wash, walk my dog, eat some pizza. Again, do some celebratory eating because I got a troller. Yay me. Yes, Julie, you need to do a blog. Absolutely. I, you know, it's just a great, great way, great way, great way to organize your thoughts and how you can guide others. It's like, basically, it's just this, it's a great way of containing all of your ideas and is a great way also for sharing your ideas. And also, you know, of course, when you do a blog post, you can share it with your community that also directs people to your website or to your blog, which is also very helpful uh, from to you from a business standpoint. Yes, do it. Do it. I say yes. And when you get your first troller, I want you to message me and let me know and we'll celebrate together. <laughs> you do paint furniture. Hallelujah. Let's do a, a, a social high five. So glad to hear. Let's do a fist bump. I'm so glad. I would love it if you would share your work with the Portuguese community. I would love it. Even if you don't use Porch Nook paint, that's okay. You know, we all need inspiration. All right, I, this time I mean it. I'm going to hit the finish button. I'm having too much fun chatting with you guys. You guys take care. Have a wonderful day. It's Wednesday, right? You guys take care. Be safe. Be warm. Talk to you soon. Bye.